Book Readings with Miss Bernard. Hello all and welcome to another Book Readings with Miss Bernard. Today is day 16 of our Black History Month series. Today's story is The Faith of Elijah Cummings, The North Star of Equal Justice. Written by Carol Boston Weatherford. Illustrated by Laura Freeman. In the summer of 1962, 11-year-old Elijah Cummings and other African-American children protested to integrate a city pool in Baltimore. As they marched to the pool, a white mob throwing rocks and bottles yelled, Go back where you came from! The march, organized by Juanita Jackson Mitchell, a local civil rights lawyer, led Elijah to consider becoming a lawyer. I had rights and I had to fight for them. Racism was the very reason Elijah's sharecropper parents had moved north in the first place. In South Carolina, Ruth Cummings and her husband Robert each earned about 15 cents an hour working on land where their ancestors had been enslaved. Ruth had seen blacks beaten for seeking voting rights. To escape this fate, the couple settled in Maryland in the 1940s. They had faith that God was leading them to a place where their children would have a better chance in life. In South Baltimore, Robert, Ruth, and their seven children lived in a rented four-room row house. They all shared one bathroom. In cramped quarters, Elijah's parents who only finished fourth grade, raised their children to value education. Robert had a saying, if you miss a day of school, that means you died the night before. <laughs> My mom and dad were two of the most brilliant people. Despite having perfect attendance, Elijah struggled in school. His teachers thought he talked too much and asked too many questions. They said he would never be able to read or write well. Studying at home was tough. Our house was so small, said Elijah, that we, tri that we children had to go to the library to do our homework. Elijah found not only study space there, but also hope. The public library was one of the few places he went where both black and white people could go. After the librarians got off work, they stayed on to tutor him. With their help, he proved his teachers wrong and returned to regular classes. The librarians and books did something more than teach me history and English and math. They helped me define myself as a human being. They became the role models for my life. At home, Elijah learned lessons about hard work and sacrifice. His father was a laborer for a chemical company. His mother worked at a pickle plant and later as a domestic cleaning other people's homes. Ruth and Robert scrimped and saved so they could buy a house with more space and a grassy yard. This meant they could not afford Christmas presents for their children. Instead, Elijah and his brothers and sisters saved their money and secretly bought gifts for their new house. That Christmas, their parents shed tears of joy. For the first time in my life, I could feel the grass growing under my feet in a yard that we owned. Although Ruth was busy raising a family, she found time to become a preacher. On Monday nights, seven or eight women gathered in her basement to sing, pray, and testify. That prayer band grew into a small church, Victory Prayer Chapel. Although the Cummings struggled to feed their family, they taught their children to share. Elijah's mother cooked and cleaned for sick neighbors and gave homemade canned goods to hungry families. Elijah saw his parents' example as faith in action. 
One of their callings as children of God was to take care of those in need. My mother was one of the smartest, most thoughtful and loving people I have ever known. She created a home for me, my dad, and my siblings, where God was at the center and love overflowed. Some weekends, the Cummings family, dressed in their Sunday best, headed to Friendship Airport. Not to go on trips, but to watch planes take off and land. My father was a great inspiration to me. He taught us nothing was impossible. At age nine, Elijah took his first job as a paperboy for the Afro-American newspaper. The editor encouraged Elijah to go to college. After church on Sundays, Elijah ran home to listen to Reverend Martin Luther King's speeches on his transistor radio. Dr. King's words opened Elijah's heart and eyes. In his neighborhood, he noticed that some boys like him, African-American and working class, <clears throat> were not in school. Instead, they were in reform school for running afoul of the law. But they were just kids, not hardened criminals. As Elijah watched the television lawyer, Perry Mason, he recalled the real life civil rights lawyer, Juanita Jackson Mitchell. It dawned on him that those boys needed defending. We have a moral responsibility to do everything in our power to help people live the best lives that they can. By high school, Elijah had chosen his profession, law. But his school counselor tried to dash his dreams. Who do you think you are? Your mama is a domestic and your daddy is a laborer. The counselor reminded Elijah. He was shattered. That evening, he told his mother what happened. Have faith, she said. God has a plan for you. I say to our children, don't let anybody take away your hope. I don't care who they are, and let no one define you. No one. All right. While in school, Elijah worked at a drugstore. The pharmacist, Albert Friedman, gave him the money to apply to college and regularly sent him notes saying, hang in there, along with $10. That show of faith was not lost on Elijah. Education is the gateway for success in accomplishing anything in life. Mm. Elijah was outgoing, but his religion was strict. And his parents had rules, no card games, period. When he danced for the first time, it was at his high school prom. At Howard University in Washington, D.C., Elijah became a campus leader. He was the president of his sophomore class and later of the student government. Elijah graduated with honors and went to law school in 1973. All right, H you, you know. <laughs> Miss Bernard also went to Howard University. <laughs> he was working as a lawyer when he was elected to the Maryland House of Delegates in 1983. Concerned that children could be harmed he championed a ban on alcohol and tobacco advertising in inner city neighborhoods. For generations, countless African Americans have spoken up when they see injustice, and it is in their memory that we fight to protect our progress today, not just for ourselves, but for generations, generations yet unborn. Elijah was more than a public figure. He was also a father of three. Just as his own parents uplifted him, he praised his children as black, brilliant, and beautiful. In 1996, Elijah Cummings was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. Fellow lawmakers looked up to him, and in 2003, he was elected chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Elijah was now a voice for people of color. He spoke out to ensure that everyone was treated fairly and equally. Our nation's civil rights struggles are not limited to our history. Now, we are the Americans who must organize, 
mobilize and fight the good fight. Although he was a Washington power broker, Elijah never left his roots, commuting to the capital from his inner city Baltimore neighborhood. He kept a campaign sign in his home's window so citizens could find him if they needed him. In 2015, when police brutality sparked protests in Baltimore, Elijah rushed to the scene of the unrest with his bull bullhorn. He called for calm. Then this son of preachers walked arm in arm with residents, singing an African-American spiritual. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We have been chosen to light the way for our neighbors. In Congress, Elijah was a beacon for justice rising to become chair of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform in 2019. With a cool head, a booming voice, and a sense of history, he pushed for change even though he was battling ill health and relied on a cane and a walker. A relentless warrior, Elijah Cummings was always working for tomorrow and for youth. Our children, he said, are the living messages we send to a future we will never see. Hmm. In God's time, we shall overcome. The end. Hmm. What a powerful, powerful man, the Honorable Elijah Cummings. In the back of the book, it says, This is our time, our watch, and our victory to be won. This is our future to secure. And there is still work to be done. All right. This has been another book readings with Miss Bernard. I hope you come back tomorrow for day 17 of our Black History Month series. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.